Hello everyone, and welcome back to Signalis. Last time we entered this facility in search of this Alina person from the photograph, and found that this entire facility and the mine beneath it presumably had been overtaken by some kind of... I guess we can describe it as a zombie infection, but it seems to be doing something so much more that I can't really explain. To be honest, I still don't really feel like I can explain anything that's going on here. We have no idea what our relationship with this person is, why we're looking for them, what that dream was about in the beginning, in which we were in a different place, but seemingly trying to follow a very similar goal, a different person in a burned photograph. But for as curious as this is all making me, I'm starting to wonder if I'm not maybe supposed to be confused. Because this game definitely has a very unique atmosphere to it. And it's almost like the sense of dread you get in a dream, where you know that something's wrong, but you just can't quite place what your place even is in this world. I guess we can just push forward and hope for answers, but we do have a list of answers right here. And that's a number of safe keys uh, that were taken from this confiscated uh, list of radio frequencies. Oh, hey, we actually do have a map. That's useful. Oh, and this is even more useful. Not only does it actually show us the entire area, but it shows us which doors can't be opened and which ones we've yet to try to open. I'm picking up what sounds like a faint voice on 101. I think we also needed 119. There we go. 868 92 141. And there may be a hint somewhere, but I could also just brute force it. 29961. There we go. 47762. And if we encounter any other safes, we've still got a whole bunch of other ones. And. That appears to be a usable card. Come on, give it to me. Uh, identification card, yes. And uh, now I just gotta figure out where we use it. Something I noticed when editing the first part is that this one actually appeared to be staring at its reflection in the mirror. So maybe there's something about them that's still, like, contemplative? And I'm starting to wonder about those artifacts that I keep seeing around them. Maybe they're sort of related to... Actually, wait, look. I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost like there's like a trail or a shadow that runs up the wall. Almost as if there were like a silhouette of a person up the wall and through the mirror. I mean, maybe I'm just seeing things, but... I think there's something more going on here than face value, than just an infection. That wasn't already clear. Alright, let's try this. Uh, Mineshaft A access. I need an administrator's key to call this elevator. Okay, so where would I get an administrator's key? Back to the map. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Lady Longlegs really has anything else to offer me right now. Which means I kind of came over here for nothing. Actually, I should probably get in the habit of just inspecting everything. Uh, hospital wing, level 3, cycle 3-9. Okay, I don't know if that really helps us, though. Oh, that's Star. That's the, uh... That's the person we found earlier who was injured. Oh, right. We needed it for here. Alright, there we go. Now we have the use of the elevator. And presumably that's like the keys to the city, right? We can move between floors as we wish. She probably regrets leaving it down here, but I can see why she didn't come back for it. All right, so we've got that. Uh, and we can go to level three. I'm just trying to see how this all works. Oh, it's fully animated and everything. Oh. Uh, we're seeing... We're seeing brief visions. Why have the lights gone out? Uh, Feller F4 power interruption. Notice card impounded. Please contact administrator.
I really don't feel like stepping off right now. Great, so now we're stranded, at least presumably. Does that mean that someone has revoked Star's access? I don't know, but uh, it's certainly bad for us. I can see this is open on every floor. Perhaps I'm letting outside commentary unduly influence my perception of this game. That looks like something I can get. But when I'm this confused, I can't help it. It describes itself as a dream about dreaming. And in a dream, there's an enemy right down there. You tend to have goals that are very strongly felt, but that you can't actually define. For example, you might want nothing more in the world than to see a certain person, but not be able to recall a single memory of that person. All you know is that it's the only thing you want. Ooh, shotgun. Uh, how much ammo does it have? Five. Uh, that makes it more useful than the pistol at this very moment. It's probably also a one-hit kill. Here's what I'm thinking is I'm going to hold on to the handgun for now. But I'm going to first of all equip these things because I really should have done that earlier. We'll put away the shotgun until we need it. Simply because I'm under the assumption that we may need like some bigger guns for bigger enemies. Uh, we've still got some repair patches. Okay, I'm afraid to put away the photograph. I mean, it's easy inventory space, but I don't know. The game tells me I have an attachment to something, and I do. And I get the feeling that those are the terms the game wants me to meet it on. Now, I discovered the map late before. What happens if we have a look at something that we haven't seen yet? It'll only show rooms that we've been to and only give us the status of doors we've checked, so that's interesting. I mean, information and movement are a commodity as much as any other in a survival horror game, so I'm actually really impressed with uh, the way it's able to handle things. Uh, insert blank card to begin print. Oh, great, so we've got to mint ourselves a whole other card in order to gain access again. All right, then this room at the end of the hall, the secure area, is our new home base. And when movement is a commodity, you need to know where you're running when you start running. Which means we're gonna, oh my god. You ventured out. I'm gonna try, since we just saved, I'm gonna try to use that stun baton, but only when we need to. Because death isn't final with these things. They'll get up after a while, but it also doesn't seem to be on a set timer. There were areas where we killed more than one, where one of them got up later and the other didn't. Examination room key required. And we can get in here. These reflections will never not get to me, especially when they come in from the top like that, because this game has a habit of hiding enemies in the shadows when we enter a room for the first time. Ooh. Is that like some kind of short barrel revolver? Oh, wait. These are all like samples. This one's got something embedded in its skull. Okay, well, I'm definitely interested in seeing what this is about. This is a... Something, something embedded in stone. <laughs> Looks like a calculator or something. Ooh, and that may give us a hint as to like a password or something. Uh, E, what are you? A coin or some kind of circular object. Oh, with gears inside, maybe, maybe like a watch or something? What the connection between these things is, I don't know. I can see various objects laid out under the x-ray apparatus behind the glass. And if I can get my hands on them, maybe I can do something with them? Actually, it might be kind of hard for you to see, but if we look at this, you can see that there's like a metal plate on either side of this skull. 
And we can see the shape and ridges of a brain, but there's something else, something darker within. Like loops, like wires or something, or other apparatus maybe? Actually, there's a couple of branching pieces on the bottom here. I don't know if those are just sections of brain that have been highlighted, or if this is just like a replica brain. Or actually the full head. Either way, we're going to have to make our way down this hallway now. Okay, it looks like we're okay for now. And there's definitely one up there revealed by the shadow. Oh, it's a morgue. Alright, what is your what is your sight line like? If we sneak around like this. Uh, shotgun rounds, okay. I, I know I can take you, but it's not a question of whether I can kill you. It's a question of whether I want to spend the resources. Incinerator room key required. And that alone takes something that's weaker than me and makes this feel like the Velociraptor in the kitchen scene in Jurassic Park. And now I've lost sight of you. Oh no, you're coming this way. I don't think you've noticed me yet because you haven't shouted. Yeah, you're still in your patrol. Alright, so that's cool. So objects do actually block your line of sight. Oh no, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, get out, get out, get out! Are you gonna come out after me? Is that a thing? Okay, so moving around in there unimpeded is going to be much more difficult from now on. Oh my god. See, the thing about this game is that it's using the Silent Hill 2 strategy when it comes to its enemies, which is everything's fine until it's not. The enemies are there not to make you feel a constant sense of panic, but to make you just feel constantly unsafe, like you can never let your guard down. They're so slow, yet they're dangerous enough, and my resource is so limited that it gives me time to think about it. In a way, panic is almost a relief because it removes the thinking from the equation. Here, I really get to stew in just how trapped I feel in these narrow corridors where they're just there to be in the way. Let's move down. I see you moving away. Oh, you're moving back. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to try to use the stun stick on you. There you go. And now F. Okay, so they do work how I thought I how I thought they did. And maybe there is still a little bit of panic in the equation. But the fact that I'm sort of panicking a little bit the most after I think I've killed you and I've got that moment to react is I guess that's a sign that they're doing something right. All right there's another. Let's start trying these doors. Oh, it is very dark in here. And they know what they're doing with these reflective surfaces, too, because when they first emerge, those reflections look a lot like a shadow. Uh, auto-injector. Kalestim N is a sterile solution in an auto-injector pen for emergency injection. It instantly acts on the replica circulatory system, restoring system health. It's intended to be used to avoid critical systems failure in replica frames generation 3 and up. Uh, it can be used directly from the inventory screen. You can also equip it in the inventory screen to the tool slot to use on the move. Uh, so this is like a quick big heal. When equipped to the tool slot, the auto injector will activate automatically when the replica system would otherwise fail, preventing system failure and instantly restoring the system partially. Always seek medical attention after averted system failure. Alina's Diary. Something is wrong. Nobody will tell me what's happening. But ever since I woke up, everyone's been behaving strangely. The protectors won't let me leave my room and return to work, even though the wound from my fall is already healed. I think there must have been an accident in the mine. I overheard two Yules whispering in front of my room that they're running out of staff. I'm worried that something has happened to Elster. I haven't heard from her in a while. I can't just sit around here any longer. Oh no, you tried to leave. What is this over here? A TV with a built-in video cassette player. 
If I had a video cassette, I could watch it here. Alright, uh, so we're on the lookout for a cassette and several different types of keycard. As well as a blank keycard. As for you... How are we getting around you? This hallway is narrow enough with so many doors that it may be worth it to clear this permanently. There you go. I say permanently. The fact that there's... Oh no. And there's most of our pistol ammo. And I can just about guarantee some of you are going to be getting up. There's just so many of them and so few resources. How many of these stun sticks do we still have? Uh, two. And one bullet, which means the handgun is effectively useless now. Uh, patient Euler. Patient complained about severe nausea and headaches. Admitted to hospital wing after vomiting oxidant fluid during work. Clinical picture in line with other recent cases among protector staff. While we still have no indication what causes this syndrome, we've observed similar developments in all patients. Most puzzlingly, development of the syndrome seems to progress similarly in both replica and gestalt patients. Initial admission tests showed hypotension, high fever and dehydration, and internal hemorrhaging. Strong cognitive decline within the first cycle, alopecia and purpura. Within five cycles, skin will begin to peel in large patches. Decline of vision quality and ability to communicate may follow. Just old patients will usually expire at this stage due to infections, while results for replica patients seem to... vary. The word vary is doing a lot of work there. Okay, so we know that there's one active down here. There's something... Possibly an auto-injector sitting right there, but there is a lot of ammo in this room. Including more pistol rounds, so you know what? I think this is worth it. Get chased! Oh, there's two! Oh no, well, that's a huge- oh god, that's a huge problem. I need to kill that one. Ow. I need to hit you. I need to make it around you. Ow! First damage. Can I grab that? Yes. Pick it up. Ow! can't tell how I'm doing, but once I made that stun, I had to commit. Am I, am I loaded up here? Yes, I am. Oh no, I can't see you. Oh, that is so unfair. And stomp. Okay, so how are we doing on health? Yellow. Probably don't need to use anything yet. We do have an abundance of health items, but we... We do have repair spray, and we can get a whole bunch of shotgun rounds, which we are now going to switch to. Might as well use a repair patch now, since it works over time. And get back in here for the save. See, the thing is, like, I, I like games like this where, through their mechanics, force you to make, like, horror movie decisions. In this case, I made the fairly dumb decision to rush back in there to stop a downed enemy, or else just kind of eat the loss of that, uh, of that shock. Is there something over here? Another repair patch. Don't mind if I do. We need to make sure we get everything out of this room because it is just a dead end and I never want to have to come back here. So let's grab you as well. Now let's try the end of this hallway. No good. No good. Excellent. And we can enter here. Another survivor. Oh, and that looks to be another stun prod. Can never get enough stun prods. They're actually just really satisfying to use. Hello? Yule. Everyone's turned weird. I'm the only one left, I think. Will I get sick like the others too? I hope not. I mean, just sit tight, I guess. I really hope we're not spreading something to you. I haven't even thought about the idea that we could potentially get sick ourselves. Oh uh, yeah, everybody, everybody knows about the wall codes. Well, you know, it's pretty easy to discover the frequencies of these things, don't you think? 
Oh, this one is using letters instead of numbers. Well, hang on. Let's see if we still have that note in our memory. Uh, frequencies. There we go. Uh, let's try 249. 94889. Hmm. Well, hmm. Maybe maybe the numbers correspond to letters, but no, clearly that's not the case. Alright, what's across the hall then? Oh, what was this? The three golden stars of the nation adorn the Stella. Sword. That was one of the things listed on the frequency sheet. Oh, I see. Oh, so I was actually right the first time. Hmm. Earth key. Fire. Air. Water. And gold. Uh, is this the nuclear bunker? What kind of secrets are locked behind five different keys? <laughs> and can we pull a real sneaky and just... Oh, God. And just print all five. Like, can we actually just start a keycard piracy business? All right, so it's KH something something K. Well, the problem is discerning that eight is not going to be straightforward. Oh, hey, I went to brute force it and I got it on the first try. That's hilarious. Okay, I mean, maybe it was just positional, but whatever. That's really funny. Well, that saves me a whole lot of thinking. Ooh, there's a Samsung Gear 360. Or perhaps a replica eye. Come on. Eidetic module. What does that do for us? Uh, and the incinerator room key, which means we're going back to the incinerator room. Which means we're going to have to make our way through two of those things. Although, if, if we can reduce it to one, things could go back to the nice, stealthy way they were before, which is the way this game is forcing me to think, which is what I absolutely love about survival horror games. And I think it's a real accomplishment when you can make me actually be afraid of the enemies simply through the mechanics and without making them frustrating. Although the game is still young, let's go save. All right, now let's have a look at this module. An old photographic memory module allows recording of up to six visual memories. Incredibly outdated, but it might still be useful. Uh, we can equip it or inspect. When equipped, it can record, okay, up to six visual memories as grayscale images. Old images are automatically overwritten when taking a picture. Oh no, so if I equip it, what does that do? Okay, well I'm gonna unequip it until I know what it's for. But it doesn't seem to take up an inventory slot. It seems to be its own thing. But one piece of good news is that we're finally going to get to try out the shotgun. I actually don't see anything now, and that's making me exceptionally nervous. Also, my aim seems to be a little bit weird and stiff all of a sudden. But the other guy is gone now, so I guess that's nice. All right, well, I'm happy to keep that arrangement for the time being. I just, I jump scare myself every time I enter a room. And it looks like one of these units is currently in use. Uh, thermite flare, what do those do? Uh, proper disposal of corpses. Oh, did these allow us to make it permanent? My. As you probably heard, there have been multiple accounts of bodies of decommissioned protectors spontaneously reactivating and acting in a defective manner. That's a really clinical way of saying robot zombies. 
Based on November's autopsy report, it seems that all affected units showed some sort of cancerous growth in their organic components. Like those weird bulges that we noted before? According to her, unless completely incinerated, this growth may reactivate the replica even after it's been dead for hours. We don't know what causes this, and we're unsure who's affected. We can't keep up with incinerating all the bodies, with just two incinerators that constantly need recalibrating. So we're improvising. These thermite flares are able to melt through replica armor and burn their organic components from the inside. I've requisitioned more of them, but there was some paperwork missing, so we'll have to wait a bit longer. Yep, you can't out bureaucracy an apocalyptic event. That is so cool for a sci-fi horror premise. So we have here a disease that will kill a human host, but a biomechanical host will be able to keep going. With unpredictable results, as they said, but uh, let's mess with this. Again, I really don't like the idea of messing with things before I even know what the desired result is. Okay, so too much CO2, too little gas, and too much O2. This game really loves its trial and error puzzles, doesn't it? Uh, so let's turn up the gas and down the CO2 and see what happens. Okay, so we've got gas sorted. Uh, our O2 is too low, so I guess we're just gonna keep notching these one at a time. There we go, now we just need to lower the CO2 a bit more. And we are a licensed mortician. At least we will be once we get this just right. And it seems like we've reached it. There we are. Oh wow, we had to do all that to open the furnace? Well, that used to be a replica body. Presumably that's what was left behind. No space to carry fire key. Great. So if we equip you, you go in the tool slot, right? Okay. And we'll think about that, but these are such a valuable resource, you have no idea. And so I'm going to save them for places where we're going to be traversing a lot. And as a narrow choke point, ow! That does not seem fair to me. thing is, anything worth killing is worth burning. Go through. But it's really, it's really, really got to justify it. If I can move past it, it's not worth it. Uh, so we got the fire key. And the fire key, special access card with a fire motif. That, it's ultimately just one of five. But presumably that means that the body that was burned here... Which I now realize any one of these can leap up at any time. Must have been somebody pretty high up. Okay, so you're gonna pull the same trick of leaping out of the floor every time. And you're in the way, which means we gotta go like that. Okay, good. We never have to engage with that room again. Goodbye, all. There you are. And look, anytime I bring out the thermite, it's basically a hit. The goal is to completely eliminate something that's going to be in my way for too long, and you might just be eligible, but I think I can open this from the other side. There we go, that brings us back to the elevator hall, and here's a new room for us where we can find a new thing. Uh, the socket wrench handle. Okay, what do we do with you? Maybe a puzzle we haven't seen yet? A universal wrench handle with a snap-on pin for socket adapters. Useless without a socket adapter. <laughs> Great, so it's a two-part puzzle solution. Alright, you. You might be the first to test a lot of equipment. A 
dead replica and the room is completely fallen away and flooded. Maybe collapsed into the mines below. Uh, the pump room key, which we will surely need to investigate what's beyond. I'm shocked he didn't get up. A dead Aura unit. She looks strangely peaceful. Hmm. And we cannot enter the stall. Not that I'd really want to. Well, the only place this so-called pump room could be is at the bottom of this hall. Thank you for spawning where you did. Unlocks on the other side, not good. Nope, not... Okay, use pump room key. Thank you. Otherwise, that would have been disastrous, which is why this thing is making even more of a case for why we should kill it right here and now. Uh, disposable stun prod, thank you. Uh, reservoir drainage instructions. With tank A full, here's how to equalize the reservoir. Fill tank B, then fill tank C with water only from B. Move the water from tank C back to tank A. Fill tank C again with the remaining water from tank B, then refill tank B from tank A. Again, fill tank C with water only from tank B, and then move it back to tank A. If you make a mistake and get stuck, just spill everything back into tank A and start over. Yep, I retained all of that. Uh, flood drainage system malfunction. Tall medical wing auras. The automatic equalizer pumps in the flood drainage system still appear to be broken causing the lower level to be flooded. Since we're currently focusing repair efforts on the east wing staircase structure, the drainage system pressure has to be manually equalized from the control panel in the pump control room for now. To drain the water, make sure both the A and B tanks have the same amount of water, and C is completely empty. You can see the water levels in the tanks on the control panel. Press the buttons at the bottom of the panel to move water between the tanks using the air pressure system. It's a bit tricky to get the two tanks equalized this way, because you can only move all the water in a tank at once this way. Unless the receiving tank is full. With the pumps out of order, only tank A will fill up by itself. Oh my god. Also, I had mentioned this in the previous part, but I think I cut it, so I'll bring it up again. It's kind of interesting how there seems to be, in the future, like, a merging of languages. Like, we're seeing... I, I wouldn't know the difference between, like, Chinese and Japanese text, but there's also what appears to be, like, German in here, and it's used, like, almost interchangeably. And it's really weird to see different types of characters used alongside each other. Okay, so we need to drain tank A into tank B. There we go. And then from B to C... Okay, but what we really wanted was for all these to have the same level. Oh, it's this kind of puzzle. Okay, I do actually... I do actually recognize what has to happen here. It's just gonna be a huge pain. There we go, finally. Alright, now you're gonna be dropping out of there. I've had puzzles like that before, but that one was a lot more difficult in its goals because we had to move everything all at once. And we really had to use, like, C kind of as, like, a, a control almost. But, alright, so let's get through here. You're a problem. I think we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to do it. One shot. And we are going to try... What do you mean, no use? Oh, we probably have to stomp you first. And there you go, dead forever. No more biomechanical components for you. Which means no more vessel for you to be a puppet. I really hope that stuff works the way they say it does. Let's see what's going on down here. Space to carry water key, of course. You know, of course. And now I have to wonder where this is going to bring us back out. Uh, what we could do is... Man, th this inventory is so unbelievably restrictive. And I don't know why it has to be this way. Maybe a reason will present itself. You're down here. How am I getting back up? 
Ah, here we go. This is what I was hoping for. That that locked door... ...is a stairwell. Excellent. Alright, we shall be back. But that also means we've got a lot more to explore now. A lot of area that was previously flooded... ...and I've just realized is still nonetheless inhabited by enemies, meaning they don't need air the way we do. So now we can grab that water key. That's two out of the five. So we're making our way through here. That is the dumbest thing that that can happen. I don't know if it does any damage. Yeah, no, it does. Oh my god, that is so stupid. But we've got more ammo, more 10 mil. And the blank key, yes. Okay, it's a good thing we traveled light down here. Ooh, there's another room, another save room, in fact, right across the way, so I didn't even need to go back. Uh, pick up examination room key? Yes, I will. And another stun prod, which I will always happily accept more of. Okay, you are just getting shot. And we'll figure out about thermite later. I don't think I'm going to use that for now. But we'll see what's going on down the rest of this place. We got that blank key, and I think a whole lot of worlds have been opened up for us by coming down here. Video cassette, yes. Down here really is where everything starts opening up, huh? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I didn't have time to grab any of that. Well, now what are we doing? What do we got in terms of ammo? Three plus two stun charges. We ain't burning all of this, but maybe we can kill everything and make a grab for it. If we had a socket and the wrench, we could do this. Which might still be on me if I would had more than two pockets to keep my stuff in. Personnel grievance form, P14. Date time of incident, all the time. Location of incident, medical wing. Description. Elf keeps using my wrench and misplacing the 10mm socket. I've been reprimanded for not repairing the fan and the vent in the lower level, but I can't remove the vent cover without a 10mm wrench socket. I know she's doing it on purpose. Let me guess, in the exam room? Oh my god. Alright, well... We're gonna have to shoot our way out of this. And I haven't been taking any reloads. Alright. You all just lie in wait under the floorboards like trapdoor spiders, don't you? Right, what is this? No space for 12 millimeter ammo. Maybe that's the gun in the x-ray room. And 10 mil. No space for anything, though, because of the stuff we just got. Run through when you all spring your ambush. Yeah, it lacks its bite. Knowing that you have to do that kind of makes things easier for me. This is one of those joyous occasions where I have a ton of different keys to puzzles, and I just have to start putting them together. So we're going to put in the blank key. Uh, define pattern, okay. So that's where we have to use the x-ray machine. But we can leave you there for now. And next we have the exam key. So that's used, freeing up an inventory slot, and getting us to this area. 10 millimeter socket, thank you very much. Quick hearing construction foam. Since the ration plan has changed again, we're short on quick hearing repair spray. Turns out we can make our own by combining co coagulant K with normal expanding PU foam. I guess it smells bad, and that's why it's not used as much. It won't expand as much, but it'll harden instantly and make a fairly solid bond if you're in a rush to get some repairs done. You can use normal replica repair patches, since they're a pretty easy source of coagulant K. Just combine them with normal repair sprays. And no space to carry auto-injector, but you know what, that's alright. So we just learned, through just in-game information, not even unlocking something, a unique use for some of our materials. That's pretty neat. 
I like it in games such as Outer Wilds, where, like, information is what enables you to do something. I don't know. You're back. Rather than, uh, rather than the game arbitrarily telling you that you can now. So if we combine you with you, now you are one thing and ready for use. And we can take our, we had something else, uh, the cassette tape, right? And use that in the other hallway. Good sneaking. Although we probably should burn you. But that becomes harder to justify the later into the stage we get. Uh, and where was that VCR? It was right above us. Movement is a commodity. Anytime you go somewhere, it costs you something. Uh, video cassette, there you go. Oh, we're actually playing this. And look, just sitting on this dimly lit train, watching the snowy city pass by. This is something, a weird feeling that I mostly get from like anime. Where it's like that weird sense of like cozy depression, you know? Shows up a lot in sci-fi as well now that I think about it. White hair. Kind of like the person on the first photograph. Pick up gold key. Uh, yes. No way. What is that about? I mean, we basically just downloaded a car. What is going on here? Something seems strange about this key. Like it doesn't belong here. Okay, hang on. I am actually hatching a universe brain maneuver. One second. Nope. I'm actually glad you're here this time. <laughs> you are pretty fast. But hang on. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a thing. We're gonna do a thing. I'm going to save. And now I'm going to load this previous save only so that I can look at the videotape and examine it the way I should have. An SBK format compact set containing chromium. Okay, so you explained to me what a tape is. I was wondering if you could maybe explain the weird properties it seemingly has, and... If we're having, like, visions within a tape that somehow enable us to get a physical object out of it... Could that mean that there was something much more to our vision at the beginning of the game? I mean, I, I say vision, but I'm actually lacking some pretty major context here. For all I know, that's a memory. Either way, things obviously aren't completely reliable in Elster's head, but I don't know if she's aware of it, if it's supposed to be the case, there's just so much still to learn. But in contrast with the last part, I do feel like we're making some significant progress, so I'm gonna keep going. Alright, so I've got out my pencil and paper and drawn a diagram for what the x-ray showed, but I was defining this by where the notch is in the corner, and it doesn't seem like I'm actually, or maybe, yeah. Okay, no, it's just, I'm, I'm having to parse this one second. It's so hard when it's, like, inverted like this, but I think it's you, 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 and then... You, 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 I think that's right, I think that's right, I hope that's right, and it still says blank key, yep, so the way, the way this works is that that's either right, or it's inverted from the pattern that needs to be there. Which is why I'm refraining from saving for the time being. But what we can do for now is jump down and try and worry about that, uh, that vent cover. 
Yeah, boop. I haven't even tried that upper door yet. And as long as these guys are willing to waste their advantage on this every time, I'm actually perfectly okay with this. So let's get in there. Use 10 mil socket wrench, of course. And we find another key. There's the air key, and I guess we don't need the socket wrench anymore. Man, I was really worried the first time I came in here that that was going to be our way out. So what's going to happen next, leaving all this ammo behind, is we're going to run up through here. That's locked, which is fine by me. And it says that there is a door here, according to the map. Unless the blank key is the missing key. And all I've got to do is bring these things upstairs. Okie dokie. So let's start loading up our inventory. Start with what we know. And get it done. So let's insert our first two. Uh, if I can only tell which of these is which. Used water key. I, I don't even remember what all I brought up here. And the fire key. Fitting opposites. And let's go get the others. With air. Gold. The mysterious key that shouldn't exist. And blank. No, okay, so we had it inverted. All right, just gotta make a quick run then. All right, so let's try this again. So towards the notch, up one, this entire layer, and then this way, I think. There we go, thank you. And you know what? It's here that I think I am actually going to make a run on that ammo downstairs. Because one is for a gun I don't have, another is for a gun I don't use, but you just never know. Alright, so the plan is we're gonna run across, these guys are gonna come out, we're gonna grab the things. Yep, come on, oh, you don't. You, you keep moving while we're in that screen. Uh, and now we're gonna come in here, wait for you to go away, and then go back out and run upstairs and save. Uh, potential complications, the one in the hallway gets up. So, run, run, run. By the way, I'm, I'm so happy to be playing a game where I have to strategize like this. You might get up, but it's okay if you do now, because we're done down here. Goodbye, screw this area. After much waffling around, let's see what's beyond here. Is that a giant hole melted in the wall? What is all this? Oh, it's a containment unit or something in the center of the room. And another opportunity to save, rendering all the running back and forth I just did pointless. There's some more ammo right here, more shotgun rounds, can always use more. And another opportunity to drop down. Oh boy, and it's stocking me up big time. I don't know if I like that, I think I'm gonna keep the shotgun ammo on me for now. Because I'm just a little bit paranoid. Well, let's do it. It looks like I can safely drop down to the room below. Oh no. You look real bossy. Oh no, I kind of figured. I kind of figured, I kind of figured, ow. Can you hit me that way? You can. It's saying I can't hit you though. There's some 
Air patches here. Nope. Come on now. Uh, Ten mil. Oh, you've got flunkies. You've got flunkies. Oh, I hate, I hate flunky bosses, and I hate how things still keep moving while I'm trying to pick stuff up. Zap. Die. What are you... You're falling to your knees. Typically, this is the part in the boss fight where we can hit you. There we go. You're peeping your guts out. That is... Oh, I think I might have wasted that last shell. That was a whole lot of punishment you just took. Ow. Okay, we might have to actually die and reload and come prepared. There's a second one, so that's awesome. Zap. Stomp. When are you going to do your thing again? And another one. I wonder if I can get you to shoot your own buddies. I only have one gun. And it's giving me ammo for the one that I don't have. Um. Alright, does it matter where I'm standing with relation to you? Seems like it does. Ow! And I get damaged by touching you while you're in that state? Well, I'm bleeding to death. Yep, I'm just gonna have to die. You're both up. I am shot again. Th just kill me. Just kill me. Alright, so. We are bringing all of our shotgun ammo. We are bringing a 10 mil pistol. Uh, we're actually going to reload that first so that we actually have a decent amount. Make sure we got all we can because we, we need to just keep killing those things. Actually, if we come with thermite instead of the stun prods, maybe we can kill them for good. Maybe those are all it has and we can buy ourselves some breathing room. Alright, so, same plan as before, keep moving around, stop you from hitting us, uh, change direction, um, and just wait you out. We shoot you when your visor opens, we want to burn our enemies quickly, uh, which speaking of, uh, do we have, we need to make sure our thermite is equipped so we can actually kill them, meaning we are gonna have to hit them with lay pistol, so let's go like that. Since they showed up before he opened the visor. Well, she's doing that over there, but we need you to go down, do that, see? And now we'll only have you. You're already back up on. At least there's one less. You have arrived. Bang, bang, bang. Are you going down? You are, thank you. See? Thank you for patiently waiting and not shooting me, Elmer Fudd. Uh, we are going to move to the shotgun now, since it should be the last thing we need in this fight. Oh. Let's make sure we don't do all this in the open. Come on. I know you had some bad tacos. I know you're looking to throw up all over the place. Thank you. And just assume the execution position. It doesn't always... Ow, wait, did I just get damaged? By your puke? It doesn't always say I can hit you. Like, that time it wasn't a square, it was an XC square. Ow, and I don't really think there was much I could do about that. Let's pick up some of this stuff. Ah. Keep moving back and forth. Come on now. It does seem like the plan is working, though, to keep both of these other guys down for the count. Whether that was a good use of thermite, I don't know, but it's certainly helping me out now. Alright, you're gonna go like that in pretty much the worst position possible. And we're getting presumably big damage on you right now. Reload. We're gonna have to start digging into that 10 mil soon, because that's all our shotgun ammo. We've got five left. Oh, jeez. But this is significantly easier now. And I'm just under the assumption that that's hurting you. I don't actually know that for sure. All I know is that things are significantly easier when we have time to prepare for a fight, but if we don't, if we don't know we're getting into one, a traveling light works against us. There's something in the corner. Oh, more shotgun rounds! Ten! Yes! Oh my god. Hadn't even seen them. 
I can't hit you from that angle. You're behind too many things. <sighs> no. Well, that was a missed opportunity. I wonder if your puke is on a timer or if you have to take a certain number of shots. <laughs> I love how at a certain point you'll give up and try to reposition. That's kind of funny. No, 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 no. If you're shooting, it means you have a solution on me. All right, yep, fall to the ground, Big Daddy. There we go. And there you go, goodbye. Wasn't so bad once we got the stuff we needed. Adler. The visitor. Welcome to our facility. Something was unearthed. You caught us at an unfortunate time. How can I help you? Wait, this is happening right now! I'm looking for a gestalt. A worker at our facility. Let me see that picture. Alina Sio. I believe she's one of our factory workers. However... You shouldn't have returned. Okay, well, we have a new target for our remaining shotgun ammo and or flares. Dream about dreaming. That's not just a description, that's actually text within the game. I must have fallen asleep while waiting for Erica. Wait, I'm playing as Issa or Issa or I don't know, I'm struggling with a lot of the pronunciations in this game. Point is, I'm that crazy knife lady from earlier. Did she already go home without me? We wanted to get some books from the library together. I should check if she's still there. There's that snowy city outside. Is it maybe this person's memories? A recording that I saw on that cassette? But then again, I keep getting into situations and then finding myself entirely in another, sometimes moving back to where I was originally? A dream about dreaming, that's going to be deeply significant to the way we interpret events here, but I don't even know where to start with that. We're just going to have to gather some more context. Well, I was actually going to do my outro here, but then I realized that might not be smart, considering... I mean, will it have auto-saved? Probably not, right? I think that was just our door closing, but... Man, so... such a dreamlike atmosphere waking up in a darkened classroom, a cityscape outside while snow blows past the window. Brought front sector C. <laughs> this is a high school. What is up with their faces? And they saw the white-haired person from before. The elevator is out of order. Uh, yeah, it's out of order and stuffed with the bodies of other units, it looks like. I mean, have I mentioned my head is absolutely racing with ideas right now? And I just don't really feel like I can contextualize it all. All I can do is start banging down doors and looking for a save point. I mean, this is absolutely fascinating me. But it looks like we finally got it, and I'm just going to cut it off here, because if I keep following my curiosity, this is never going to end. We're almost five hours into recording right now, and 
a large portion of that is trying to figure out the trial and error puzzles, trying to manage my inventory space, and doing numerous retakes because these really technical documents are really, really hard to read in like plain English. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.